Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. It is your boy Bursted you back here and today we are here for Beast Gohan in SH Figure Arts 4. Now, I'm I'm gonna get into everything I can with this figure. He's he's got about every single problem that I talked with Orange Piccolo for the most part. It's gonna be here with this uh Beast Gohan. You know, I've been waiting for him for a little over uh what? A month two months since he came out in japan and i mean over time my excitement definitely grew less for him uh, just just seeing how he did function and stuff like that um, but we'll get into all that in just a second um be sure to be on the lookout for more news there's so much stuff happening um there's more figures coming so get ready for hopefully more drops of reviews um, but yeah we're slowly catching up on the backlog but anyways back to the video let's get straight into looking at beast gohan all right so first things first of course we're going to talk about the figure and his details and aesthetic and everything like that now first things first i do kind of like this uh you know color that they want for the hair it's obviously a more accurate scope to the film uh, i have seen people kind of customize it to be a lot more glossy actual silver type look with uh, purple hues and, and red hues around it just to kind of give it off that vibe when he's uh, all powered up he's got the aura and everything around him uh, I do like you know the little minute details across the gi uh, with the little scratches and whatnot of course we're never gonna get figures with blood unfortunately as much as I would like to see that on figures I mean I know he wasn't super battle damage or anything like that but you can't go wrong with a little bit of blood on these figures. I mean, it's Dragon Ball characters, bro. They were doing crazy shit back in the day. You know, blood everywhere. So, you know, one day, maybe we'll get little blood scratches across the body and whatnot eventually. Um, but yeah, I mean, besides that, it's it's about the same figure as, uh, you know, the prior superhero Gohan, the budget version. The colors obviously are different and he does have the little, you know, tears in his gi. Shoes, roughly the same. They look like they might be a little bit of a different color, but not too far off from each other. Um, the biggest notable thing, of course, is the upper body sculpt being entirely different because the joints are hidden underneath the gi. So there's no articulation here, um, you know, like there is with the ab crunch right here. Um, it's hidden in there and it's a little bit, I would say a lot more limited actually compared to this Gohan here. But yeah, besides that, there really isn't anything too different. Uh, of course, this is a DL custom sculpt uh, that I got from Omnimade.com. Uh, you can also find it on AliExpress. And yeah, without further ado, I think it's time to just kind of get into the accessories because there's not too much anything different to say about this Gohan in terms of his design here. So let's get straight into it. Getting into the faces, we'll just kind of quickly show each uh, face, then the hands and the other accessories. And kind of maybe either after this or near the end, I will do kind of a comparison between the DL custom stuff as well as the official. But here we have the smirk. Here we have our stern expression. Here we have the gritting teeth expression. And here we have our yelling expression. Not sure how I feel about the eyes. They kind of look weird when you just have it straight on. And it has to do with more of the angle of the hair. So kind of weird, but I mean, it looks cool if you do it in a certain pose and stuff like that. Kind of, it's like, it has that vibe where it's like looking one way where it's not looking the other. I don't know. Let me know if you see what I'm talking about. Of course, we can't forget the initial transformation face that's included. Gotta say, I am really glad Tomoshi included it. A little bit of a gap there. It happens, but yeah, a little bit of a gap, unfortunately. All right, of course, we've got our standard fist hands. Open palm, key blast hands, come in, man, hands. 
kind of grabbing hands. Also could serve as key blast and Kamehameha hands. Then we have our kind of stance, posing hands, ready for combat. Now we have our special beam cannon hands here and I would like to say this is technically kind of the first non, you know, Super Saiyan 4 uh, instant transmissions hands you could also use. Um, of course, we don't have an actual, you know, new non SSJ4 3.0 Goku to use, but, you know, once we get that legendary Super Saiyan Goku later in November, I believe, I mean, you can use it on there for sure. The pigs shouldn't be too different, but yeah, nice to see that we finally have an actual special, uh, not special beam cannon, well, it is special beam cannon, but also can be used for instant transmission. Really cool. And uh, yeah, really like it. Of course, I like it better with the actual effect. And here are the crossed arms. Not too bad, pretty easy to put in. And here we have the special beam cannon. I do really like this effect. I just, I feel like there could have been some extra additions to it, like maybe adding lightning around it. Uh, you know, the red, the purples, just the blue is not necessarily enough to satisfy me, I guess, color wise. But I do like that they at least gave us the effect. And I mean, I'm still waiting to see when they'll give us a Piccolo version, but you know, this is, I guess, a good start. And yeah, let's look at the rest of these remaining accessories. And additionally, you get the little stand. It's on a little ball uh, peg at the bottom. It allows you to essentially move it pretty good in range. And you would pop the special beam cannon onto it right there. Oops, he just fell off. And you get some pretty good articulation there. And yeah, that is pretty much it for the accessories. Now the next thing I do quickly want to get into is basically talking about everything underneath the gi and kind of showing that off. But I think it's better if we just get the articulation out the way first. That way so we can kind of get in the mood to uh, disassemble this Gohan. So without further ado, let me get into the articulation presentation of this video. So first things first, we always show off the upper head articulation up here. Of course, it's on a double ball peg, so you're gonna get a lot better range than the standard uh, are being used on the 2.0, you know, older bodies. And here's him with the neck. And of course, he suffers that same problem where everything falls off as soon as his uh, chin kind of touches the neck down there, which is unfortunate, but maybe there can be a way around it if you, I guess, hold everything together, but it still happens. And that's about as far back as you can get. And of course, compared to the DL Customs, he doesn't have a super big gap back there, but one's still noticeable. And the arms, get your standard T-pose. I don't necessarily know how I feel about these on a smaller body. It feels like it's kind of hindering him a little bit more than the orange piccolo. Or maybe it's just that it, maybe it's just that I'm not using it correctly. And maybe this inside part needs to be pushed wider in there. Cause as you can see this part right here, yeah, it's already kind of falling out of place. So it kind of looks like it's hindering it. And it should be closer inside you know, underneath this first part. And I guess this ties into the next thing I'm about to show, which is the butterfly joint. And I mean, Gohan, this Gohan should be able to get into the special beam cannon pose relatively easy. Of course, it's all about how you can manipulate the joints to your advantage. You know, he can get there. You just really have to keep playing at moving these and making it look natural, but he definitely can get there and he can, you know, get his arm kind of up there with the right hand. Of course, that would look a lot better. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly possible. It's all about just kind of maneuvering that uh, articulation here in the chest. It's, <laughs> it's really not all that crazy. You do need to kind of mod it a little bit if you want it to be a little bit better, but that might um, 
make this bottom part like actually pop out to where you can kind of see underneath. A aesthetic wise, nobody probably likes that, but if you enjoy extra articulation, that's where you would make that change. Is inside with the internals, take out the limiters and stuff like that. I did that with the orange piccolo and I kind of share photos of that, but I probably am not gonna do that with this Gohan. And I mean, you can kind of see, I messed around and I kind of took this uh, gi off, but of course you have to cut it in the back so you can kind of see a little bit got messed up, but it's okay. Of course, you do have this bend here in the crotch area that allows you to get basically all the articulation down there you would want, but should be available up here too. I, I really don't think that it should be just gone. You know. Legs, again, this Gohan is literally the same articulation wise from the waist down as the uh, budget version. So there's nothing too different. You get your uh, swivel here kind of at the shin, get your ankle swivel and you get your toe hinge. And then of course up here, you've got your bicep swivel and at the elbow and you've got your articulation here with the uh, wrist swivel. So yeah, that kind of just goes over that now, the real part. I'm gonna quickly take off this gi and just kind of give my general thoughts on uh, the rest of this figure and get ready to close the video out. All right, so here we are. I've taken the gi off now. First things first, this is the disclaimer. This belt is not the actual belt that was on him just now. I actually replaced it. So this is what it looks like. You can tell it's a lot bigger. And if I had put this on, it would be a lot of gap right here. So this belt is from Dragon Stars Gohan. And essentially I cut it uh, a little bit in the back and then re-glued it. And it's a little bit more fitted so it doesn't have all that extra space and it looks just a little bit more natural. Did I have to go that far? Should we have to go that far for a good figure that's shirtless? I mean, no, um, but it is what it is. You know, it's not necessarily meant to be shirtless, but you know, they did give it a sculpt underneath, so admire that. But uh, I mean, besides that, you know, the arms and everything, it does kind of look a little weird. Again, you have to cut it in the back in order to actually take the gi off, which is just really weird. It, like I said in the last video, it, it you know inhibits him from doing anything articulation-wise anyway. And there is a limiter in here, which is why the articulation isn't going that much further without the shirt. So that's kind of the unfortunate part. Uh, these here are loose. Uh, it's not necessarily kind of in there, stuck on anything. It's just free to move around. So be wary of that. And that's why some poses will look weird because he's got these traps and then there's nowhere like, you know, to kind of bounce off of that and continue the shape. So that's why it looks very off putting. But yeah, I mean, besides that, you know, it's a shirtless Gohan and I mean, it works um, in certain situations, of course, like I said, you know, with the actual sash that he comes with, it will look a lot more spacious and a lot weirder. So if you do have some kind of extra sash or cheaper sash um you could do that and cut it down to match this waist size so it looks a little bit more fitted but besides that that's pretty much it about this gohan i mean i i don't have anything too special to say about it i do think he's probably one of the weaker releases of this year just because the execution on this use of you know, articulation under the gi wasn't necessarily the best. You know, Orange Piccolo can get away with it because he's a big character. Uh, and I mean, articulation wise, he's pretty decent from the waist down. So, and, and you know, looks wise, he looks really good. Gohan, I think I was just expecting a little bit more out of, but I mean, they got the look down. You know, the articulation is somewhat, you know, decent with the gi on. Of course, without the gi on, he can easily get his arms over here and do that pose. And it makes you kind of wonder if they had used any kind of thinner plastic for this, you know, would he be able to do it? And I mean, he should be able to at the end of the day with this, even on here, you just need to, like I said, uh, really make this soft plastic work for you. It's a little bit easier since it's not as thick as orange piccolos, which is good. So take that information how you will. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this guy. Um, 
I may do the actual DL Customs comparison in a short video. Uh, this one's running just a tad little long. But yeah, that's Beast Gohan in SH Figure Arts form. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.